Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Off the Rack. I'm Sal. And I'm Tiffany. This is a live comic book review show. We take comic books from the past week and recap them, review, review them, tell you what we thought about them, and then recommend comics that are coming out this week that we think you should check out. Uh, I'll be honest, we didn't. I, I don't have a lot of books this week uh, that I read, but uh, uh, we're going to talk about some news and reviews. Yeah. So that'll kind of supplement it a little bit. It's like news, reviews, and like previews. Of what's oh, coming out I like this that. Week. News, reviews, and previews. That's so much easier than saying what I say. That's that's the way I'm. I came up with that. I was I like, if he makes me do the intro today, that's what I'm going to say. Oh, that's fun. I should have made you do that. I, I like to to mix it up once in a while. I know. I know. Uh, this show is sponsored by viewers like you. If you're watching the show live. You can sponsor today's show by using a super chat. Ask a question or comment. We'll read it here on the show, and we'll make it more or less your show. You know, you got questions, we got answers. We'll happy to do it and make the show all whatever you want. Exactly. Uh, for now, um, we should mention that uh, yeah, that's the that's the way the cookie crumbles. That's how the show uh, uh, operates. So normally what we do is the, uh, the system is we do review or we do uh, news. news, then we review the books, then we uh, pick a book of the week. Yeah. It's one of our favorites of the week. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. we recommend comics. Uh, so uh, let's jump into some news. Um, the, uh, the, you know, there wasn't a lot of sensational books that came out or rather the books that came out weren't sexy enough for me to like make a headline out of. So right. I thought, Doesn't mean they're not good. No, no, whatever. no, 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 no. Just... There were a couple of interesting things that came out. Uh, the first one I was actually uh, kind of on the cusp of, I was on the cutting edge uh, of this news because I follow quite a few uh, comic book creators on uh, the social medias. Yeah. And, uh, and I saw this like interesting, uh, very similar looking tweet that went out. And uh, before anybody wants to jump on it. Um, yeah, I did mean tweet. Um, because I genuinely believe that Twitter will inevitably go back to its original namesake. And I don't want to be on the record ever calling them anything other than tweets because that's what they are. Yeah. So, no, I don't mean I don't mean X. I don't mean Zeets. I mean tweet and Twitter because that's what it is until it eventually closes. But uh, yeah, so I follow these folks on Twitter and, uh, and I saw a lot of like similar looking tweets and they're basically all boiling down to like, I am no longer represented by Cadence comic art. Uh -huh. And if you want uh, information, you know, I'm going to be handling them myself. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, commissions and uh, my 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 original art sales and stuff. Uh, but, you know, you guys, uh, you know, reach out to them if you have any other prior obligations and blah, blah, blah. Very um, professional, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, not uh, sensational, but they all happen around the same time. And I was watching them all rolling and I'm like, uh oh, what did Cadence Comic Art do? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. But a couple hours later, Bleeding Cool had an article about it where they were just like, uh, a number of comic creators have announced that they're not rec represented by these guys. And it's funny because like when Tiff and I went to, I want to say it was San Diego. We noticed that uh, the artist alley, which had originally, when we first started going to like New York comic con artist alley was just an alley of artists. As you can imagine, the name implies uh, most of the creators were all representing by re representing themselves. In fact, uh, if you watch my interview with uh, Chip Zdarsky from this past year, um, he talks about selling his jams and jellies at uh, mm -hmm. at comic cons and how yeah, yeah, yeah. you know they just they, they bring their box it doesn't matter how uh, big or small you were whether you were just starting out or you were a veteran of the industry you got your box and you schlepped out your prints and you got little signs well that's uh, becoming a lot less ubiquitous nowadays as we've seen um more and more uh creators who have names uh, or or who have gained a foothold in the industry are being represented by these different outlets mm -hmm. uh, comic sketch art and you know felix comic uh you know we're seeing a lot of different groups representing these different artists and we saw at san diego in new york like oh look at like how artist alley has become mostly these few like three or four brands and cadence was one of them and uh and and now uh it, it falls but i was like that's interesting how uh you know we had just remarked on how oh this is this is becoming a burgeoning industry representing comic book artists and like supporting them and doing this like you know handling the business aspect for them mm -hmm. and then one of them became like kind of like this fell under this 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 issue um but yeah uh, apparently uh the uh, manager of cadence uh, andrew chrisman uh resigned on january 29th and said he's not associated with the company and so that's another big element to it yeah. and again you know it's not necessarily like a lot like a very big news story but it's interesting just to see when these like these these blips in the news and in this industry come up right, right. kind of like identify and be like what what is that all about right. but like a lot of different people uh that you might know uh gavin gidry for example was represented by uh cadence no longer um jorge molina um zoe thoroughgood uh, you know, just tons of different creators that you know. Ivan Kiello, I believe. Uh, Jeff Lemire. Yeah, there's some of these Sarah Pichelli. So, like, starting from a month ago. 
to like the last few days. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Declan Shalvey, Greg Smallwood. Um, Lara Skeety. Yeah. Gabriel Hardman. Uh, Mike Hawthorne. Oh, Joel Jones. Right? Yeah. A lot of names you now, might know. Of course, know. some of these could just be they chose to go someplace else. Who knows? Yeah. We're not here to. No, 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 no. Gabriel Walta. Oh, um, Skeety. Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, and, that, and I'm and actually Aaron Campbell. A lot of these I'm actually noticing for the first time, like, hey, we went to a lot of these people's booths this past year at yeah, both New York and yeah, San Diego. Yeah. Um, yeah. Huh. Right. And they all removed themselves from representation right. uh, within the last couple of days. Well, month. It said months to days. Right. Exactly. So, but uh, yeah. So, yeah, it, it's just interesting um, that uh, I guess with the loss of Andrew Christman, uh, you, you, he must have been an influential, uh, you know, Cog. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. I mean, I hopefully right. It could be solidarity, or it could be uh, not. Right. It, it could, could be just indicator be... of a larger problem. I, I don't know. I mean, I hopefully all of those artists are able to. Um, oh, they would. No, I mean, like carry on in a, in a way that isn't overwhelming. Yes. Just like manage that stuff on top of doing what they have to do day to day. It can be a lot. So hopefully they're able to, you know, keep their themselves doing what they want to do. Oh, and absolutely. Also manage this element of their their business yeah it's like oh oh i know it's well part of the reason why they do it is because or why they like find representation is because it's it, it, it's a it relieves a burden so uh you know we wish all those artists and more uh yeah. the best and we uh we hope they find uh swift and uh you know well, amicable they're, representation right, either doing it on their own or finding someone else but like hopefully we'll be able to see them at, at cons in the future oh and, we will you know yeah stop by and say hi yes exactly uh i saw that um I want to say thanks largely in part to the uh, groundswell of support that Ultimate Spider-Man received as a result of, uh, the, the, you know, the net sales and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ultimate Black Panther comes out this week. Oh, okay. It's already sold out. Ooh, Pretty much at great. most comic book stores. Uh, that's second, fantastic. Yeah, second printing's on the way. I uh, I actually, again, I, before there was an article, this time on uh, Adventures in Poor Taste, I saw that, uh, what was it? Our local comic shop, Zap Comics, had to make an announcement. I want to say it was over a week ago where they were like, we're already sold out of Black Panther. Wow. Like, Ultimate uh, Black Panther is gone. People are calling in? Yeah, people That's are calling in. They had it on their pre-order your books. You you won't miss out. You won't have to get the reprint. You, you, you could have get the, second printing, the original get one. Printing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, uh, you're going to have, if you missed out, the next time you're going to be able to pick up a physical copy of Ultimate Black Panther is March 13th. So essentially wow. more than a month from well, now. Well, that means that they weren't prepared. They were not prepared. Well, because they probably went from pre-orders. Hell yeah. If the pre-orders were low, they didn't make a big print run. They probably went over a certain amount because comic stores probably ordered X amount, like over whatever That's their That's exactly how they were. run their business. But like, that means that like, if depending on the presses that they're using, which I'm going to guess they probably use like maybe one, two companies, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. Like they'd have to upset the timeline of all the other books mm -hmm. in order to put that back to press. Yes. So they have to find space in the timeline. Yeah. I guess that's when the, the next space was available. Wow. Definitely. But you're getting another, uh, a different cover for your second printing. You're getting, uh, you know, it's going to be crazy. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's just, great. Yeah. Just oh, like uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. I, like I went to pre-order Ultimate x -Man. Oh, yeah. We should probably put that on the list. I feel like I did already, <laughs> but if I didn't, okay. uh, I'm going to have to do that uh, pronto. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go well, ahead That's and do incredible. That. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Like, see, that's like, that's what's great about imprints like this. And mm -hmm. hopefully all the books are, you know, great yes. across the board. But something like this with the Ultimate moniker on it mm -hmm. is like it's kind of like batman or it's like Sp ultimate spider-man was able to to raise up yes you know the interest in these other books and hopefully it's not just because it's a new number one hopefully it's because they're like i really enjoyed it was an ultimate spider-man i wonder what's in store for right. other characters yeah i i assume that a large portion of it might be the uh the the collector's speculation sure sure, sure. but uh, i genuinely do believe that like because of the creation of the uh you know the creative team that's involved with ultimate uh black panther and the fact that like the ultimate universe is like exciting and new and people are like looking forward to it. I mean, Brian Hill and Stephanie Caselli are working on that book and it's going to be like it, the, the pitch was great. Like Dune yeah. in the Marvel universe. And like, but through the lens of black Panther and like, that yeah. sounds great. Yeah. 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 It's just a good, uh, it's a good pitch and I'm excited to see where it goes. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just excited that like, it is that kind of news. Like it's great. Right. News. Yeah. That's Cause even though it means like some folk aren't going to be able to get it For right away. 
um, you will, uh, you know, it, it means that there's there's a demand. Right, right, right. In one and way or another. if you do have a local comic book store, now's your chance to tell them that you do want the second printing. If you weren't able to get the first printing, you can let them know, like, hey, when it comes in, yeah. put it aside for me. Right. And when you and, make sure and, you yeah. pick it up. and when you hear about this stuff, you <laughs> ask about it. You go like, hey, listen, uh, are you gonna <laughs> like. You know, I'm hearing buzz about this stuff. Do you want to uh, do you want to put that on my pull list for me, please? Right. Um, but yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and pre-order only the first issue. Do you want me to subscribe to the whole series? Or just... oh, you can start with that. That's All right, fine. we'll start with the first issue. Uh, but yeah. Because a lot of them I might read digitally, so I'll probably have two copies of that. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's worth having. Yeah. But uh, yeah, as far as Ultimate X-Men is concerned, I, 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 you know, based on how popular Peach Momoko is and, uh, and all that, I would definitely... Uh, so keep great. an eye out for that. Um, yeah, so that that was another piece of news. Great, uh, I think that's wonderful. I know, I think so too. Um, in other uh, interesting news, I uh, we there was an announcement on um, on socials again. I believe uh, it was on either Instagram or Twitter. I believe it was Instagram that Rob Liefeld, uh, you know, celebrated comic book auteur, mm -hmm. is uh, retiring from Deadpool. And I was like, oh, what? And uh, I, I, contrary to uh, what some might speculate, you know, I, I've seen Rob Liefeld's name in a Deadpool book in decades. And it's like, no, that's not true. He, he has actually produced Deadpool work over the last uh, couple of years. Every time there's a Deadpool movie, a Deadpool uh, book with Rob Liefeld's name on it comes out or sure. uh, oh, or he does okay. a or okay. does a story or a bunch of covers. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, but he's retiring. This is the statement. I want to read the statement because I think it's important to really get it in, in, in Rob's voice. Uh, I'm retiring from Deadpool. It's official. Yep. After 33 years of not only introducing Deadpool, but chronicling many of his most popular adventures, it's time for the Deadpool daddy to say farewell. Uh, one of the fun parts about getting older is you can retire from things. So here I am. So I worked up one last crazy Deadpool yarn for the fine folks at Marvel and they responded with electric glee and I started producing it last month for release in the summer of 2024. I often wondered what my life would be like if I had not created and sold not just Deadpool, but Cable, Domino, Strife, and many others to Marvel. What if young Rob hadn't taken up the challenge of transforming a title that was headed towards cancellation is one of the better alternate universe tales. Of course, that's uh, not true because Louise Simonson was, uh, this is editorialization, of course, but she was in involved with uh, the uh, New Mutants line at that time and it was actually uh, selling quite well well and uh, she was doing a great job so i think that does a disservice to uh, wheezy but moving on uh, it certainly transformed my young career creating opportunities in record-breaking sales for new mutants and x-force this is true he did actually produce record-breaking sales for new mutants and x-force uh creating and introducing the deadpool car and uh, featuring lady deadpool and dogpool was a great function of my midlife crisis during 2009 and they're uh, enduring characters here today uh in 2015 i started deadpool bad blood this is the book i was talking about uh almost a decade old uh getting deadpool his first original graphic novel and his only chart topping number one ranking to date an achievement that, not, that got me a round of congratulations from marvel brass that pumped my chest out farther than captain america's uh, like there now no one can make fun of me i've already done it and uh the original art was sold for over a hundred thousand dollars so uh no other auteur has oh he calls himself an auteur uh <laughs> combined to write and illustrate more deadpool work i'll complete this journey with over 1000 pages alongside my mercenary misfit uh, see he is a writer he's alliterative uh so i'll finish this one last deadpool story and trust me it's a wild one and call it a collaboration for the ages it'll be fun in case you're wondering why now well that's easy I'll be 57 at the end of this, and my eyes are still functioning. The work continues to be strong. I want to go out with the best effort I can muster. The hand-eye coordination won't be there forever. I'll elaborate more on this on my next Rob Observations podcast. Oh, yes, available for download now. And look forward to taking this journey with you, the world's greatest fans who have always provided the best support a cartoonist could imagine. Uh, and it goes on from there, but uh, we, we get the gist of it. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, there's a lot to, there, there's a bit to unpack, not a lot. It's a Rob Liefeld uh, work after all. But uh, in one case, I, I do want to say that like he is acknowledging the issues we see with aging comic yes. book artists. Yeah, that's... Where it's like, yo, it's a performance sport. Yep. You know, like there are some Tom Brady's in the comic book world, but for the most part, you know, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're going to have to adapt or retire because of, you know, diminishing eyes, diminishing muscles, diminishing control. It's just, a, it's a sad fact. And it's one we don't really talk about. It, it, all we do really is critique the artist if they choose to stay. But if they make their living doing it, what else can they do? Right. So it's a real, like, you know, Sophie's choice. Oh, sure, sure, sure. But, uh, so, so I appreciate that kind of, like, 
honesty. Candor, yeah. That candor, exactly. Uh, on the other hand, mm -hmm. um, I also uh, think that it's uh, more of a self-congratulatory promotion for his podcast than it is uh, for any noteworthy announcement. You're not retiring from a character you don't own. Marvel hires you to draw him occasionally mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, you're not leaving. You know, you you were never, like, you know. Never, like, it, it's, <laughs> it's not the same as owning a bakery. <laughs> yeah, right. Or, or uh, you know, if Brian K. Vaughn announced he was retiring from Saga, well, that, that means that they're not going to be making any Saga anymore. Right. You know, or someone else is going to have to uh, come on and write it, and 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 then, so, or or if Todd McFarlane said, "I'm retiring from Spawn." Yeah, I guess it's kind of like saying, "I'm retiring from drinking soda." Yeah, and making a big announcement about it. Like, well, soda didn't ask you to be there. I mean, except he didn't. He look, he he didn't invent. He he, he was part fifty percent of, of him created Deadpool. Yes, Fabian Nicieza created the other fifty percent. Right. And then Joe Kelly came along and made him interesting, but. Uh, See, yeah, you know, apparently he would disagree with you. Right. I know he would. Oh, Joe Kelly or, or Rob Liefeld? Rob. Uh, naturally. Uh, but uh, but I think that people who like the character would not. No. Um, so, you know, but I but I uh, I think it's funny because it very much is indicative of like the the old like Stan Lee slash Todd McFarlane slash like image uh, almost a uh, Robert Kirkman -y, uh school of mm -hmm. uh, of self-promotion. You say something sensational, like, I'm retiring from Deadpool, even if it's a ridiculous statement. To... Sure. It would be like if Stan Lee said he was retiring from Spider-Man. Right. That's that's what it would be like. It's like, look, it's uh, you are undisputedly at least 50% of the reason why that character exists. You are undisputedly not the steward of the character over the last two, three, four decades. But if you want to put your stamp on the character, people will take notice. Right, and so to say, you are no longer to you're you're di it's more like he's he's saying I'm divesting myself of Deadpool. Yeah, I if uh, it's a self imposed decision. You're not no one's holding your feet to the flame. Right, and I'm sure he means it, and yet I'm also sure that he's just making sure that this book sells bigger numbers than Absolutely. it might have on its own. Right. Um, uh, and also then if he decides to come back in like five years and do something else. He can be like, I'm coming out of retirement. For Whoa! All right. Like, it really. Yeah, just, so it is two big bites just, of the apple. It sets you up for some promotion. Totally um, is. Which definitely feels like a him move. Yes, absolutely. Which I don't, uh, without condemning or condoning. Right. I think it's. it's uh, I'm, I'm telling you what I'm seeing. Yes, yes. You're, uh, <laughs> you're observing. You're using your bag of tricks. Yeah. And, uh, and they're not your exclusive bag of tricks, they're the bag of tricks that are available for when you need to get people to pay attention to a thing that has diminishing popularity. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean Deadpool or you, I just mean in comics, you know, like it's, it's a, it's stiff competition out there and you got to do whatever you can to get people to pay attention. Totally understandable. No shade whatsoever. Um, but I thought it was funny. You know, Rob comes out and he's like, Hey, I'm retiring. And I'm like, no, you're not. That ain't what that means. But I know, you know that. Right. And I, and I, and I, and I gotta, I, I respect it in a way, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, but also, you know, I don't. So uh, that's it. Was just funny. I was right. just like, oh well, look at that. Look, Rob's I, it's in the news. Just, it's just, and he happened to time it right around the time a Deadpool movie is. Gee whiz! Out. Who'd have thought? Um, and the, and look, we're doing it. Like the thumbnail of this episode is that. So here it is. It worked. Hey, ta -da. it worked. He's laughing all the way to the bank. Ha, ha, ha. He's retiring all the way to the bank. Uh, is that how that works? Nope. Can I do that? I mean, you could you could announce that you're retiring from something that you don't own anymore and could easily come back to at any point Fantastic. because it has no stakes. All right. But, uh, but yeah. Um, so before we move on, I did want to uh, share a few super chats out there. Out there. I love that. Uh, me too. Hulkzilla says a uh, happy extreme Monday. Extreme. Extreme. Cause it's a Rob Liefeldian kind of day. Yeah. Uh, Bear farmer, not a terribly interesting week, huh? Comp pop woo. Well, I mean, I, I disagree. I think that there's plenty of interesting things. Rob Liefelds are tiring from Deadpool. Woo. Samuel Summers, thanks for your generosity. I finally got a chance to finish out Moon Knight. Nice. And I was, I love the story, and I'm excited to see this new version of Moon Knight. There you go. There you go. Also, Reese has turned into my favorite new character. She kind of snuck in there. Like I was like, at first, I was like, okay, cool. Like here's like uh, an initial character just to tell a story. Nope, we're sticking around. Oh, we have growth. All right. Yeah. Yeah. No, good, good stuff. Good stuff. No, I agree. Uh, 
Alec Luigi Fernandez says, weird news. It's not like he's been consistently present in Deadpool's life. Anywho, Comic Pop Woo, Excelsior, my friends, Excelsior, oh, you too. Excelsior. I agree. It's very similar to what you just said. Right. Uh, Paul Williams, thanks to you both. And now that it's wrapping up, I'm finally started Krakoa X-Men nice. and working my way through the first load of books. And I'm loving them. See, that's the thing. Yeah, no, yeah. enjoy it. Is yeah. this, I think it's going to be a talked about um, time period. Oh, yeah. It, people are going to, I, I, I predict, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, or at least you know, feel free to weigh in if you disagree. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I, I predict that there will be instant nostalgia for it the second it ends. And that there will be built-in nostalgia within the narrative of the books. Like that there will be like a tease either at the end of the Krakoa era or within the first like two arcs of the new era of X-Men. Like to string any remaining Krakoa fans along. You know, like there'll be some kind of okay. looming, you know, who is strife kind of mystery <laughs> that will, uh, you know, a, a mystery that like is. Who is the extra? Yes. Who is the, like that kind of thing? Like who kidnapped Krakoa? You know what I mean? Or like, where is Krakoa? That could be the, the hashtag, right? right? And people bring it up at every convention for the next six years. And then some up and coming new blood will come in and go like. I will answer that question because no one actually had an answer for that question. <laughs> I, I, I seriously, I feel like that's a very X-Men thing to do. Okay. okay. But I think there will be instant nostalgia for Krakoa. I don't know if it's going to be instant. It might be, you know, it's going to depend. I yeah. Think. I, but I think the, the nostalgia will come. For oh, sure. yes. And, and I feel like uh, the, 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 those who complain about Krakoa now and have for the last five years. Five years? Can you believe it? No. Uh, has a... Uh, <laughs> Um, they, they will, you will only hear people who miss it and you'll see occasionally like one downvoted comment that says something like, I, I nudged it. Oh, there oh it no, is. it's, it's falling. What Wait, do you mean? If you hang on to it, I'm going to go fix it. Is it falling? Yeah. Keep talking. Oh, I think if you, uh, pay attention to the, 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 the ongoing conversation about Krakoa, you're going to see people who are like, yeah, you know what? I miss Krakoa. And there's going to be a couple people being like, thank God it's gone. Uh, but they're going to be few and far between. I hope so. Yeah. I hope, you're good. It's my it's my chair leg. Oh, okay. I'm fixing it. And I did. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Oh, jeez. Okay, no. Apparently it's this way or, or no way. Mm -hmm. uh, Myers 1963 favorite comic book fight. Mine's Peter versus Morlun. It was a really good one. Uh, I loved it. I agree with you. Um, there's a bunch of fights that I really enjoy. The one I'm thinking of right now is just the uh, the battle between um, Superman and Shazam during the Gulag fight in Kingdom Come. Oh. Um, Nathan2099, what's your thoughts on the Spider-Man, Spider-Verse comic series? Will we see a rebirth of Spider-Verse with the new Ultimate Spider-Man series? Uh, I hate it and no. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. Shuddy, thank you for generosity. I like uh, your avatar. Oh, Icon. yeah, that's right. right? Uh, hey, Sal and Tiff, do you think Al Ewing shows Greg Land to draw his rocks on Thor book on purpose as a wink and a nod to the fans? I don't think that I don't think that Al Ewing does anything without thinking about it 100 times first. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, but I yeah, no, uh, in, in within the pages of the new Thor series. Uh, yeah, there's like a book, like a comic book within the world. And there's like a like a sellout, lame, terrible Thor. And Greg Land draws that book within the comic book itself. And I'm like, yeah, that's. That's Maybe. what I would do. I, I, it's not actually not what I would do because I wouldn't think of it. It's a brilliant move. Uh, Matt Jones, the last DC animated movies made me love Constantine and Justice League Dark. What Justice League Dark and Hellblazer books would you guys recommend? Have loved all the books you guys have recommended. Well, all right, Matt, thanks for your generosity. Um, I know Tiffany's going to recommend the Cy Spurrier uh, Hellblazer book. Yeah, 100%. Naturally um, also, uh, you know, the previous. Yeah, I like um, Ennis and Delano runs as well um and for justice league dark i liked the um the was it rebirth era yeah well what the 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 post new 52 yeah yeah post new 52 yeah 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 i did i, I like that quite a bit um so uh, you're talking about like the james tyne in the fourth run where I like am. swamp thing looks like alan moore yeah <laughs> well for part of it but like yeah with detective chimp and, and all mm -hmm. that leading into the the actually great wonder woman event yes uh which wasn't really witching hour yeah but it was really a justice league dark but it was a secret wonder woman event so if you haven't already checked that out um uh, the witching hour yeah right that's, yeah, well, that's part of it it's like it's all part of that was, i think that's really great yeah personally right I liked it quite a bit and the art looks really good yeah it's a good team they're dysfunctional and they're and they're great and yeah i love it yeah uh nikki t what big things has rob done lately anyway uh i can actually answer that question uh he started a very influential and popular podcast and uh and he is 
Is it influential? I, I believe it is. But you know, know how I know it's influential? Because I know uh, influential people within the industry talk about it. You know, they talk about its influence. They talk about its uh, impact on the audience. They talk about how, uh, you know, he has an opinion and he shares it and it reaches. An, uh, is like, it possible that the opinion that or the, the people or the population that he's reaching are just a very loud population? Of there's no doubt in my mind it's loud. But like that doesn't mean that like it's that reaching everyone. No, 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 no. I, I think that uh, I, I, I genuinely believe there are people who are watching the show right now who are finding out Rob has a podcast for the first time. I mean, that was that was me. The last time we definitely talked about it, I was like, what? Yeah, no, but uh, but, but no, I, I believe his podcast within like hardcore uh, comic book fans is a very popular uh, I, I, I let's put resource. hardcore in quotes because I think a lot of people, different people can be a hardcore comic book, absolutely. Fan no, you don't, totally different perspective, absolutely. I think it's a, a select what I mean is uh, old school, yeah. classic fans who are also plugged into that world and want to hear you know, commentation and yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 fine. I know he's he's listen. He's got his perspective. He certainly and does. No one else has it but him. No, and and uh, and he can and he shares it. Uh, you know, and and can monetize it. It's great. <laughs> it's a brilliant move. It's, it's what we did. Uh, Nikki T. Uh, while I've been on and off on Krakoa, huh? I knew it would always end. Yeah. And Hickman left, and I knew they would end it even quicker than they planned. Actually, uh, the plan was Hickman was going to end it sooner than it ended now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hickman actually left in within the the reasoning uh, is that uh, he left to preserve it, to allow the creative team that he brought in uh, to flourish and try new things and keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I um. I agree, though, that I always knew it would end regardless of who was going to end it. Um, it was just it wasn't it wasn't meant to be a permanent. No, no, exactly. Um, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. And now, Luigi Fernandez, I'm glad you guys love Krakoa. It was hard for me. That's totally fair. Exactly. Totally fair. Now, there's plenty of errors from X-Men uh, that yeah, can be so people's much. favorites. Yeah, absolutely. That's what's so great. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about a couple of comics. Again, I didn't have a chance to actually read many of them, if, okay. if any of them this I'm gonna, week. I'm going to carry the light and share do. today. Uh, it won't all be X-Men. There's not going to be a whole lot of books. It's going to be a short show. <laughs> yeah. But two of them are going to be X-Men. And there's only three. <laughs> That's not true. I picked at some of Trinity, the the special. the special. Is it just the collection of the stuff that was in the back of the book? Uh, that actually could be very well true. Uh, Bella Ortega is the uh, main artist, but it does also say that uh, Daniel Samper did it. I didn't finish getting through it because I was like, all right. The first appearances of DC's breakout character collected here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It is a collection so of. It was. It was cute. Like I read the first one with her really getting her mac and cheese. She doesn't like Ugh. the homemade mac and cheese, which I'm just like, child, I get it. I but totally like, get child. it. But you'll grow into it. Homemade mac and cheese is superior. Yeah. But when you're a child, all you want is craft. Additionally, it, it turns out that like, if you turn Damien into a character that isn't basically him. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> That's true. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, if you take that character and you give him responsibility, no, it's fine. He's, he's suddenly he's like, having interesting. Growth. I had this moment, which definitely does not jive whatsoever, whatsoever with any future anyone has planned for Damian Wayne. Okay, hear me out. Mm -hmm. I'm reading this. This comes from nothing I was reading. My brain was just like, Psst, what if this happened in the future? And I was like, that'd be really cool. Yeah. What if Damian Wayne grew up and did what Bruce couldn't do and like got married and, and found happiness right. and was like, I'm not doing this. Yeah. Like, like flew in the face of his mother, yep. his grandfather, his, his father. Yeah. And like, just was like, I found happiness. Yeah. I mean, I'd love that. Right. Yeah. We mean, he's not in the books anymore. He can retire. But I'm just saying, no, like, wouldn't that be tremendous growth for that character making, I'm sure no comic book reader happy for that. Yeah. But I'm like, that would be that would be legitimate growth for for this character. It'd be completely not what you saw coming. Yeah. Like I would love to see that for him. It also would honor Alfred mm -hmm. in a way, where like he like embraced that. He was just like, you know what? No, yeah, I don't. I don't have to do this. Right. Like I want this. I want to. Maybe he goes and becomes like a manga artist. Like, right. May, like maybe he decides to pre like like go for that. I don't know. Yeah. I kind of like it. No, I agree. I I, I love the idea of Damien like not uh, embracing either of his uh you know uh, legacy expectations 
you know, because right. you could easily do. I mean, he's in Kingdom Come. It's not really him, but it's like uh, <laughs> the, the, the son of uh, Talia and Bruce is like he looks just like uh, sure. Raish and he's in charge of League of Assassins. You know, it's right. like, uh, that's one. The other one is he's Batman and he's got a stupid trench coat for some reason. And it's like, oh, OK, that's that's the most obvious decision I could make. But uh, what else you got? And it's like, how about he just uh, is happy and married? I mean, that's similar to uh, what uh, Tim Drake did in the animated series. Right. And like Bruce is like you know, older and whatever, as it's like, Damien is going off to start his life and his family and his future. And he's just like, you always want better for your, your children. Exactly. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, and I, and I, I and he, right? re he recognizes that this is better. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, there, I don't know. It's, There's something it's there. Growth. Growth. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Ryudu says, uh, I too would love for Damien to announce his retirement <laughs> from Robin. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I don't blame I'm you. nudging you around here. Uh, but yeah, what did so, you read? So I did check out Trinity um, yes. a little bit. And I, I, again, like I like to finish it off because it's really well written. It's really fun. Um, you know, it, it's cute. The whole thing is, is adorable. It is. It is. Especially, people are upset about this too. We could, we could talk about that for a minute. Sure, but, let's uh, do people it. are really mad about uh, Trinity and about, uh, the treatment of the character of, of Diana and Apollota and Tom King's influence on them. I didn't get a chance to read that. No, yet, but I saw the I saw a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah. There's a well. There, there's just a there's an out of context moment. And again, I don't think even if you gave them context, they would uh, change their tune. But there's like there's a real uh, anger about like how a warrior woman who is young and hormonal would behave. And I'm 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 amazed to see what a lot of men have to say about that and what they think mm -hmm. uh would happen uh but uh yeah it, it, the idea is that like both uh diana and trinity uh, uh lizzie uh mm -hmm. have to face the trial of bullets and bracers and uh by the way that yeah i think we talked about this yeah and no we talked about it you and i in our kitchen but we didn't oh, talk about it here on the show oh, okay. uh the idea Sorry. that um <laughs> and by the way that the, the bullets and bracers trial which like learning years ago not years ago but a long time like a, a quite a while ago uh that the trial of bulls of bracers is literally just shooting at you and you hit it with the braces. It makes me appreciate that amalgam book called bullets and bracers where Frank castle and Diana team up. I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. Like it must've been so fun to yeah. be in that room with like the marks act right, back right, at like right, Marvel right. versus DC and just come up with ideas. Bruce Wayne agents of shield. Here's the idea, you know, just go for it. What yeah. a fun, what a fun period. But uh, anyway, so the, there's there, we see this like kind of mirrored moment where, uh, Lizzie and Diana at the at the same ages are doing the trial mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in both cases um both Hippolyta and Diana want to uh spare their daughters from that like trial because it's scary and could hurt them and they and so both Lizzie and Diana in there at, at that age like punch their moms and go like, how dare you treat me separately from my Amazon sisters? Like, yeah. you know, I and, and and deny me my birthright, you right. know? And I'm like, yeah, look, like, can I say that I've punched any my member of my family? No. Uh, and do I think that that's a, an acceptable response to, you know, a motherly protection? Absolutely not. Do I think that it is a uh, dramatic, melodramatic expression of, feelings and opinions and 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 drama and 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 emotion in a comic book starring people wearing tights and who who punch things all the time yeah I, I'm uh, like, I, didn't, I didn't find it any, uh, jarring at all no additionally um you know we're talking about a fictitious culture right um so while yes in most of our cultures that would be inappropriate absolutely entirely um there it they are a warrior Culture? Right, that's how they exp they express themselves through expressions of violence. I don't know. Would you give Worf a hard time if he punched his dad? Right, like I mean, obviously not because he's dead. But yeah. You know. <laughs> well, would you give Alexander a hard time if he punched Worf? Right. No, you'd be like, well, that's what Klingons do. Yeah, makes the character unlikable. Does it? I mean, I guess if you can't imagine what it's like to be in a different culture and you're ascribing your own to that character, then yeah. I suppose. Um, but I think you have to consider the fact that. This is um this is they they they're not real right um, and b they do come from another background well, and, and, entirely and c the reality is most people complaining about it weren't reading Wonder Woman anyway no probably not like but I mean, if they were I mean like you know we can't help but want to ascribe our own experience memes yeah and, v and to values that and like hopefully um you know characters and stories are able to show us something new and uh, eventually we we hopefully can can switch that perspective yeah and, and you know. it's just more like, i i saw i saw the reaction i was just like really like really this is what we're complaining about now and then you see the comments and i'm like oh no you just don't like tom king okay 
Like, and it, it, like I would love to pull up an example, but like I, the, 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 th- the thread is old at this point. It'd be hard to pull up, but like the, the comments alone, I'm like, wow. Right. People are mad. Additionally, it's not like she's an adult when this is happening. So there is that element also of being a rebellious yes. teenager. And, you know, people do a lot of things at that age that are counterculture. And while maybe it's not striking their parents, it is being destructive. It is, yes. um, you know, like other self harm or via like getting a tattoo or by, you know, listening, wearing different clothes right, or, or listening or, to the wrong music or, or the, listening the, to it too loud counterculture and, like, music, yeah. and like, or destroying something or going out and like vandalizing property. Like, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, and like, this is, potentially the amazonian way to do that it's just something yeah. that's added it's a moment in this comic that may or may not ever be referenced again that's the other and thing. that's like you won't know until like time has passed there yeah. are so many things that happen in comics that people are like oh i totally forgot about that so, i don't know but people were so mad they like, i remember there were being a comment and this is the, this is the other part that i was like oh god uh where people were like oh like i hope like when the you know like the fact that King is in the writer's room, the fact that King is like a, like a consultant in the DC movie franchises. Right. And like they're, and they're mad. They're like, Oh, I hope he never gets near this character. He never like gets to get invited to the conversations about X, Y, Z. And I'm like, bruh, like all you've ever wanted is for like a comic book writer to be taken seriously and be put on the same level as these like Hollywood hacks who make, who have no respect for the, for the source material, you know, like, or who, only have like a passing understanding of the character based on a you know cartoon or a or a live action series from the 60s man you know like we're, we're talking about people who have less than a respect for the for the character we're talking about like a, a half remembered expectation of the character mm-hmm. and, and it's like you we finally have a, an, an eisner award-winning comic book writer on the same level there like helping to shepherd these characters people are like boo and i'm like that's not good enough like I mean, look, look. Can Harley Quinn beat Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman? No. Did he have that happen in Heroes in Crisis? Yeah. But like, <laughs> Heroes in Crisis sucks across the board. But like, there's another thing that like a lot there like it happened. Right. But like, but no that, one's making the Heroes in Crisis movie, man. And nothing. They're not continuing on. They're not like necessarily making a sequel or I I don't know. Like yeah. it's just it happened. And, uh, you know, we, we don't know where this story is going for Trinity well, that's true. Yet anyway. So it's like, did, did, is it happening? Is it real? I don't know. Yeah, uh, anyway. I know. I know. Just anyway. it, it, it's just like it, it's just, you know, it's Anyways, vexing. But the Trinity special was cute. Right. Uh, from Hooray. the parts that I saw of it. And the art's really fun. Like the art is just fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I agree. And oh, I, no. And or, I happen to like little vignettes. And so like this is cute right up your alley. because yeah. it is like just the collected little backups. Yes. Which I was like, hey, this was made for me who didn't read any of the backups. It was a smart idea because a lot of people didn't read those backups. And yeah. Don Ortega's art is great. It's youthful and fun and yeah. delightful. Uh, we're going to see more. If you haven't already checked out the uh, the episode where literally Tom King came on the show, we interviewed him and like, uh, interview? well, I did. But like, we, <laughs> I, I say we like the con- the channel. Sure. Did, but, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the, but the, the we, sentient channel. Right. But we talked about uh, Belen Ortega and what uh, what they loved uh, about drawing what they didn't. One of the things that they were really upset about was having to draw all those kangaroos. Um, and then that's fair was asked like, what would you like to draw? And there's two things that they want to draw. And uh, you're going to see those soon. And I think he mentions it in the show. So you'll have to watch it to, to, to see what, what the reference is. But I'm excited. Uh, John, uh, Greg, uh, George uh, Peppers says, long time. sub. we finally watched you on comic pop plays, youtube.com at comic pop plays uh, made my night. Love you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I love those emotes. Those are absolutely perfect. Yes. Um, if you very saw, if you saw the emotes, what they're talking about is when you're done with this show, head over to comic pop plays. We have done several sessions of playing Lethal Company. It's not just myself um, and Sal, but Ben joins us too, right. and our moderator yes. uh, for this chat. Um, so we play all together. Uh, so you can go check that out. We have so much fun. And um, in one of the um, episodes before Ben showed up, I got scared by pipes. Yes, you did. Yeah. And all of those are available. Like we, we, we do the streams. They're available on the YouTube channel now. So you can see Tiffany scream her pants off. I, I uh, really did. And then I left. Or you can see Ben off. kill us all. So uh, <laughs> keep an eye on for that. Most recent episode. And then be yell at him that he killed us all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Enjoy Trinity. Uh, let's t- chat about, um, let's chat a little bit about Dead X-Men number one. Yes. Came out this week. Uh, written by Steve Fox with art by Bernard Chang and Jonas Scharf. Yep. And uh, yeah, um, I wasn't really like 
looking ahead to see what was coming out. So I was just like, oh, okay, this is coming out. It's got Fall of X on it. Obviously, I'm going to check it out. Yep. What is this, right? And Steve Fox co-wrote uh, Murder World with uh, Jim Zub. Oh, so that's uh, hey, where you might remember. You his, I mean, he's also a longtime comic a writer, many, but, many but most recently he worked on, uh, on, on Murder World, which is an unofficial X-Men book because Arcade was the main antagonist. Oh, there you go. Uh, I should add that uh, Vincenzo uh, Car- 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 Caruto. Okay. Uh, it was also an artist on there. Ah, so excellent. Uh, I missed uh, the third artist. Mm-hmm. Apologies. Um, but uh, what what is this book about? Yeah, I would like to know. Uh, do you remember the X Men team that got struck down during the Hellfire Gala, much like when all the X Men died? Yes, when they like when they shot uh, God Nimrod at them. Yeah. Yes. Oh, they're back. Oh, okay. Except for um, Juggernaut. Uh, Talon and Sync, because obviously Sync and Talon are doing something. Right, else. Sync is alive. Well, well, Sync is Sync, Sync is, is alive. Tal- yeah, Sync is alive and has Talon in uh, mind. Yeah, in his so he, mind. they're not part of that at all. Yeah, and Juggernaut's not there. Um, mm. so okay. Um, here's what they're doing. Right, they are. They were brought back in order to help Professor X, um, because Rachel said that this was the team that was needed in order for them to find the the um sinister timeline backup of Moira's like sc- safe scumming thing oh. in order to go back so that he can talk to her before she gets her powers. Okay. Talk to her. Um, <laughs> or murder her. Right, right, right. Yeah, so okay. All right, that's cool. This issue is them... How do they come back? Yeah, well that 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 is That's that the is, book. That no no no. And maybe it will, but Hang on. Oh. So this issue is 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 them like trying at different timelines, right? And then like the exiles show up and you know the exiles for like a hot second. Oh. Not really. It's it's a it's the X Men, but because Blink's on it, I make it the exiles. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> no, they're, like they're in one of the timelines and they run into like the X Men and like armor is on it and you know Abigail Brand is running it. And You're like, like hooray! I'm like neat, cool, I guess, right? Yeah. Listen, here's the thing. Um, they run into a Moira and like that Moira ends up like uh, she's a bad egg there too. And like, she's making a weapon and, and, and she's, she's going to come get them. She's, oh no. she's going to come after them. Uh, she's got her, uh, I think they call it, it's weapon M. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. The weapon M component. She needs all these things. It's like car, uh, carbon adium coil, yes, adamantium carbon adium. Uh, coated, femur uh shen zorn severed head vibranium reinforcements and the last thing she needed was mysterium so there you oh. go, right? she got all her pieces and oh no this is gonna be the big bat right okay so i think for me and like i have zero evidence and i'm just gonna tell you how it feels and it may not be the truth whatsoever as to how this book came to be but i will tell you <laughs> what it feels like it feels like there was a reaction to nimrod killing um the x the team. team and people being like those that those characters didn't even get a chance and now this book is here um ah. because in theory uh the resurrection protocols um I, how right okay and and here's why i say how because technically yes the five are alive in well alive they're in the white hot room right right with okay. the rest of them right with the rest of them so you'd be like oh well i guess in theory they could do that except except um part of the resurrection protocols uh which i handy dandily looked up from marvel themselves to make sure i was correct on this because i was like hang on let me let me do my Let's make my, sure let me let me just because i'm like i feel like it should be this now maybe they have a workaround and maybe we haven't gone over that yet so yeah. we're one issue in but initially i was like mm, but this can't what yeah so part of this is that proteus or no uh part of this is that egg or yes. balls, um <laughs> has to make an egg yeah and in the eggs right Mm -hmm. like you have to take some of sinister's library of genetics right in order to kickstart it but sinister's not there Mm -hmm. and neither is his library of stuff right so unless you can just have professor x um mentally transmit an entire genetic code and somehow transmute that into that into organic material. Mm-hmm. Well, they have uh, who's who's the probability one? Hope. Yeah, um, 
What, what do you mean? Out of the five. One of them is like, one of those powers is literally just to bend reality so oh, that it Proteus. all works. <laughs> it's so Proteus. sure. Yeah, you, you funnel the, the, the info from, from Chuck yeah. through Proteus who makes that happen because meh. Right. And then suddenly you got some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, but, but they always, that was, the, that was, they've been saying this forever that like the reason they needed Sinister to be on board was because of the fact that Sinister had the genetics. Yes component and inevitably they wanted to make it so they didn't need him anymore but they still did right they still needed yes. him to do this li like this thing to have this library yeah, yeah yeah without the library how did they come back and that and that's where i'm struggling right but now that's not a question in the book that's a question of logic right like, yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah, just no, a it's just not, a left out this component not, this is not like the great mystery of of this book no and it's maybe more it like a, it's more like a vexing tidbit. maybe maybe someone will will notice that but i mean it's stuff like that additionally it's stuff like um these characters landing on earth in this timeline there being no oxygen them being saved by abigail brand being up in her ship mm -hmm. which like we see yes. as the comic book readers as this like whale shaped like or like kirkoan looking thing right okay but none of them can see it mm -hmm. and then i think dazzler saying like describing the shape of the ship as she's insulting someone okay and i'm like but you didn't see this <laughs> you didn't see the ship uh-huh you didn't see it. Yeah. Um, which makes me that and that's probably why I'm feeling like this book was just being like, oh, quick, make make this happen. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it needed a little more like time to go through and be like, wait, this character wouldn't know that. Yes. Also, how would they So they need an editor, is what you're saying, or to 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 make sure that all those pieces lined up. Right. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, that is I Marvel, mean, and they probably didn't have one. And I know a lot of people are talking about the fact that um uh, Dazzler makes a specific reference to a past thing. And I know like a lot of people are like, wow, look at this. They're really like calling up this history. Yeah. And I totally respect that. Yes. I love when writers know the history of characters. They'll throw one out. Yeah. I, and I, and I, and they just toss it in there as like a, Hey, either we're going to get some more about this or just FYI. I'm with you guys. Mm -hmm. I've, I've done these things, but then to ignore something like the process of resurrection, yes. just to make it happen. I'm like, I'm a little like meh face on this one. <laughs> yeah, like for right mm. now. Does that mean I'm not going to read anymore? No, I'll give. I'll, I'll, yeah, like, who well, knows? Oh, wait. Because maybe if, if 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 the five brought them back in the white hot room, where? How do they get That's out? That's my question. I don't. I don't. <laughs> like they didn't is what you're saying. There's no way. They came back some other way. They had to have. They had to have. Right. But do they show you the because five? Because they're here. Right. Boom. They just appear. Right. Like they're they're here. And Rachel is in seemingly a no place. So maybe there's a time jump here. I, I don't know. Yeah. We're going to find out more. I'm I, sure. have, I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that the remaining issues of this series uh, will answer it. I hope so. Um, but for now, uh, the details were kind of glaring. The inconsistencies made it a little bit difficult. Right. To appreciate like it as it was. Right. Yeah. M maybe that. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe they were pulled out of time right beforehand. Yeah. Like maybe they just blinked uh, out of reality from like the moment, except we saw them get slaughtered. Like we literally watched people get crushed to death. So I don't know. That That is, that is the problem. That is, that is the problem. And I mean, maybe we were made to, maybe one of the, like an Emma or an Xavier or Regine made everyone think that that happened mm -hmm. in order to, you know, keep up appearances. oh yeah that's a great that's a that's a decent uh explanation right like like oh no no like like no I, no they all moved two steps to the left but we projected them as being slaughtered and also somehow made the robot feel the destruction of bones right. and bodies like you can under see, his fist like talent and sync getting out of the way yes and the rest of them die <laughs> y yeah so i just um, it's it's a couple of incon it's not like if it's one problem and it's like oh well you know what we can argue that right. we we all get a no prize right. for this and, and it's, it's a lot of uh, and, and work. like here's the thing Xavier it does have like a part of Sinister's like mind in his own mind and I know Sinister's lab on Krakoa was kind of messed up mm -hmm. um but maybe he has got another lab and maybe he helped to do it like maybe they're clones and they're not resurrected I don't know yeah maybe that's what they'll find out like hey actually you're just clones. Sure. And, you a, and you're a ticking time bomb. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I or or uh, the Beyonder helped. I'm Could just be. thinking of the, like, in Secret Wars 2, going back yeah. to like 1985, um, the New Mutants are slaughtered by the Beyonder. 
and then he makes a machine and he just pops them all out. Could be. And then uh, they in the New Mutants were like, we're all walking corpses. Right. Like, <laughs> like in the, in Secret Wars two, you know, Shooter was just like, ho, oh, I'm philosophical. Right, right. Yeah, maybe maybe that's it. Maybe they're they're gonna have maybe they are out of time, like, and then they're gonna be put back in to die. Oh yeah, maybe they were slid between time, so it's like, no, you are the like one second before death team, right? And you all have to go back where you came from. After, but additionally, now there is another Moira on the table, all right? And she's still mad, and I'm like, oh, okay, uh, why? I don't know. I mean, like, maybe that's just what it always was. Maybe she was always this character. No, um, I don't know. This book has me. I don't know. I it, don't know. It, 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 yeah, and it, it's not like it's a mystery. It's a. It's more like I don't think you were on. You were not brought in. You're not on the same page. It. Yeah. You're just doing a book that's yeah, set in this it, world. You know what it is? It's like it's just. I don't know. Yeah, it's a little I'm not. Vexing. I'm not going to fully go like mm, because we're one issue in right? and that's not fair to do. No, that's fair. Um, but I will say like, I was a little thrown off by some of the workings of this. Yeah. How you pulled it off. Yeah. And it's like, it's literally a book called dead X-Men. It's about the X-Men who died. It should really like fit. Y yes. Yeah. But, and, and it is, I mean, it is about them. They, they did die and they are on a mission now. So, um, I was kind of hoping that they would run into other Moiras who were like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Right. Who are like, I'm not an evil robot or something, or something yeah, dumb. But even this, I, I'm the Hickman one who actually had like a plan and everything. Yeah. Even this Moira has like, like robotic, machinations. Yeah, like robotic pieces to oh, her too. God. And I'm like, okay. No, they're all dumb. Okay. Okay. Why? Yeah. Uh, Matthew Chalaga says, uh, speaking of saga, you guys bring it up so much. I had to re check it out and I hated it. So very, very much. But the first volume had a backup for Paper Girls, which has quickly become my new favorite comic. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I always had one of those moments where I was just like, oh, and I was like, you know, I know everyone's entitled to their opinion because you are absolutely entitled mm -hmm, to your mm -hmm. opinion. I'm, I do hope um, that you finish all of Paper Girls because it is, it, it's, it's a wonderful series. Totally different, but I, I get it, right? Because it's like Paper Girls and Saga, while written by the same writer. Two totally different two books. Two totally different things. So Totally, story-wise, totally completely it. different. But I'm glad you found Paper Girls. I like the cover designs. For them, like so the great. colors. It's Cliff Chong, right? Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, RK, hey, hope you've been well. Can't wait for Red Hood, The Hill to come out. Jason Todd revamp attempt seven, I think. All right. I didn't even know it existed. So thank you for the heads up. Uh, and Matthew Anderson, thanks for your support. Uh, just uh, sharing some appreciation. Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for what you do. Well, to answer the last two Super Chats, we're doing well. Yeah, things are doing, they're, they're going okay. No argument here. Uh, and Nathan2099, where would you like the X-Men to go? Post fall of the House of X of Rise of the Powers of Ten. Um, where would I say I I don't know, and I don't think I have a right to to say mm -hmm. because um you know I I've, I had a really fun time with this yeah, and I know not everyone loved it, and I want other people to have an opportunity to get some X Men that they really love. Totally, not that there aren't like volumes and volumes of other types of X Men, but they've all been very different, and so um. What I don't want to see them do is just go back like this didn't happen. Yes. Unless we have a reason for it. Totally. If there's a reason for it, fine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Because you never know when that like that other shoe would drop that, mm -hmm. right? Um, as long as there is good reasoning and fair logic, like wherever it goes yeah. will, will be interesting. I have an idea. Oh, yeah. May I share it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Tony Stark, because he's very integrated with the X-Men right now. Is he in a cave? And he builds something with a box of scraps. Thank you. No, he, uh, because he's like, you know, Emma's husband or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he unveils this kind of, like, basically, new status quo for the X-Men. Yeah. You know, we're, they could go back to Westchester. I love the mansion. I love all that stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is, you've heard, you know what I'm going to say because I've pitched this before, but make the X-Men the New York Avengers. Not Avengers. Not like they are the Avengers. They're the New York super team now. Mm -hmm. And Tony Stark's like, I was kind of saving this, but I'm giving it to you. Okay. It's Tower of X. <laughs> and Tower okay. of X is a is is like a is like a Stark Tower. It's like an Avengers Tower. Okay. It was such a like That's... beautiful piece of iconography. Yes. I loved it in the skyline so much. And I would love to see like it it it's just a it's a really well constructed, like a really cool design with like an X that yeah. Stark made sure they put in there. But uh you know, that's, that's Tower, kind of... Tower of X. They're the the, the X-Men are like it or not. 
the team. You have trouble, you know, like someone's attacking. Just basically well, like the like the like the Doug and X Men book where it's like they're superheroes. Or like what uh, Louise Simonson did with one of the issues of Jean Grey. Yeah, remember, really. Yeah, I remember she it made them all leave the X Mansion oh. because Xavier wasn't doing what they wanted them to do, and they basically they became that. Oh, they lived in a tower. I didn't read that. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> you read that book. I didn't read it. I read the first issue with you, but then I I didn't read the rest of it. But yeah, I want that. Yeah. Like just to go for it, you know. Yeah. All right. All right. That's that's my pitch. Listen, I'm 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 here for the ride. I'm yeah. Here for the ride. Yeah. No. Totally. And uh, nobody except me thanks for your support. Oh, well, thank you very much. What else did you read? Uh, I read Wolverine. Oh yeah. I read Wolverine. Sabretooth War Part Two. Yeah, I read Wolverine number forty-two. Uh, written by Ben Percy and uh Victor Lavelle, uh with art by Corey Smith. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this continues to be like. Uh, well, saber tooth war well yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you didn't get a chance go check out sal's interview with, with ben, ben percy, percy. writer he's of this series crazy voice. he is a crazy voice <laughs> he's the ron swanson of comics yeah, you gotta check incredible, him out incredible incredible like dude really like clearly loves wolverine um, oh yeah i grew up with him loved him uh read all the books right and he just wants to like you know he's setting up this book where it's just like oh no it's all these saber tooths We're, like working with victor lavelle who'd been writing uh, a bunch of saber tooth throughout uh Krakoa yeah he era. run the he wrote the the saber tooth book yeah um and obviously we're at like a point where it's like the chips are down for wolverine what's he gonna do like we don't know yet yeah um, and, uh, and percy's leaving the book after saber tooth war so it's like sure and if you want more insight it's mostly well it's mostly wolverine episode of me talking to ben, ben percy about this yeah but like yeah, so he's leaving the book so he's like I've been saving Sabretooth for my Literally departure. What I thought. You you and you pitched that. You were like, I think this is just I think been waiting I'm to like, do I this. think he wanted to do this and he's leaving. So he's like, now or never. Yeah. It's now or never. Um, but um, yeah, like listen, if this is what you, if this is what you want, if yeah. you just want like like Wolverine versus Sabretooth. Violence and gore and just, you know, uh, you know, a bunch of Sabretooth, like, you know, headless versions of him so that people can just <laughs> eviscerate them and do whatever and it's not too too bad right it is quite gory this book is quite gory it doesn't really bother me there's a parental advisor advisor on the book yeah. and percy asked i know th I, I think they said i don't remember it's in the interview but like either they said can you make it like as gory as you can or something like that and he's like yeah <laughs> yeah i'm in like they like it looks like marvel wants to try this marvel wants to push the boundaries sure which i was like what okay. marvel wants to push a boundary <laughs> outside of good taste that's weird. Normally, uh, Marvel wants to push boundaries of like, you know, uh, pay restrictions or right. uh, rights, uh, you know, or uh, what, what's it? Uh, residual distributions. Right. right, but right. No, a, a creative boundary. <laughs> what? So, uh, yeah, Wolverine, um, you know, uh, Akihiro was killed last yeah. issue. Um, Sabretooth's making this personal. He's like, I'm going to, I'm going to, you're going to leave you alive. Naturally. One of the other Sabretooths is like, don't do that. Just kill him now. You're be done with it. No, doing? it's his him. birthday. I got to do a whole he's thing. Like, no, I want him to hear it all. Like he's doing the thing. You're, he's doing mm -hmm. the thing, right? He's like, no, we're gonna go in there. We're gonna kill everybody. Mm -hmm. We're gonna kill them all. Yeah, his family. And everybody. I want him, everybody that's in. Everybody's protecting. And I want him to hear it all. I mm -hmm. want him to hear their screams. And like it does, it affects Wolverine, right? Yeah, he's and a miserable time. He's having a hard, he's having a rough time of it. Uh, you know, the saber shoes are ripping through uh, all kinds of of mutant um background characters, <laughs> uh, in in horrible horrible ways. Uh apparently apparently you will have a better chance if you're if you ever fall into one of these books and be and it, it becomes real uh you just hope it's your main character because <laughs> at least you'll die and you might come back right but if you're a background character and you're a mutant you, uh, and the five aren't around anymore that's like, you're just you're just in trouble i'm sorry i just just this is not the book to to be those characters yes um Obviously, Laura is still up and, and and going, but by the end of this, it's questionable if, if it is or if she is or she isn't. Mm. Uh, uh oh. Obviously, you know, for, with every um, you know, like Wolverine family member that is taken down, uh, you know, it's not going to make Logan super happy. No. Uh, we do see Logan in this because there's an iteration where like Omega Red in one of the other places has like adamantium. Um, talons or T tendrils uh, tendrils yes tendrils. um which they use to like strap wolverine up because he can't break through it mm -hmm. um and then he's like all right fine like but my bone may not be able to be broken with this but like the flesh can rip and, yes. and then he pulls hard enough so that his hands and, and feet fall off <laughs> and he's just crawling through the snow and i'm like 
listen, I, I get here's the pitch. The yeah. pitch was, I want to see that. <laughs> How do I make that happen? Yeah, I draw that. Like that. That's fine, uh -huh. right? That you know, like that's the moment. That that is what this book promised you was gore and and you know Wolverine and him like struggling and and all that and his claws then popping out of the like bloody Stump? stumps yeah. of his arms. I guess what I thought was going to happen was that he was going to have skeletal hands and feet. Yeah. But no, but I guess. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, oh, no, am I becoming Ethan or am I trying to make this work? Because I'm like, OK, so the bones are coated in adamantium, right? Yes. They're infused or what have you. But the ligaments are really the thing that keep your bones together, right? right? Your muscles are attached to your skeleton, but it's the ligaments that are holding your bones together, right? Uh -huh. So I guess what happened was not only did he rip the muscle and like, you know, his flesh from his body, but he also ripped the ligaments. Mm. That seems that seems impossible to do. I don't under know. your under I, the strength of your own power. I don't know. I don't know. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So like, just a lot was happening, and like, I I couldn't help but think about how this would have worked, mm -hmm. and I'm still not sure. But, but I don't, think, but you're, I don't think you're meant to think about it. They certainly don't want much. you to think. I don't about think it. so. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. Right. Um. But I was just and like, the well, you arrived. What? <laughs> <laughs> Ben Percy cavalierly referred to the pre to the predator's like uh, species name. Yeah, and he was like the Yorkia arrives, and you're like, you just said that with the confidence of a serial killer. I don't know if that's true, but like I've never heard it actually said out loud. The first and only time I've ever heard the predator species referred to by name, I've seen it read a bunch of times, and I'm like, it's a stupid word, and I don't want to say it. Ben Percy said it. I've never heard it before, and he said it with the confidence, like, yeah, the Yorkia, and I'm like, oh, so yeah, there you go. But yeah. So yeah, you know. Yeah. Listen, if that, that happened in this book, I'd be like, I would, I would stand up and applaud. Yeah. Oh, and is Predator versus Wolverine canon? And uh, you'll have to watch the the interview. But he, right. he'll but tell I, you. Like, if, if, if in this book, in this book of Wolverine and, and Sabretooth. Sabretooth in the Sabretooth War, yeah. if the Predator of the Yacha yeah. <laughs> shows up, right? Like, I, I will handwrite a letter. Oh my to god! Ben Mercy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um. But yeah, I mean, like. If, if you like, you know, gory books and like just, you know, if you're a huge fan of Wolverine. Right. If you're a long, old school fan of Wolverine. Yeah, you might like this book, but again, it is. If you it, didn't it, like Krakoa, you'll probably like this too. Yeah, well, I guess so, yeah. It is quite gory, for sure. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, like I knew, I'm, I'm not going to give it ding for that because they didn't pretend like it wasn't right you know like they told you what you were going into so i'm not going to be like oh really this is like nah, nah. no because like that's what this book is yeah right and i'm like i'm just i'm i was like eh i'm not a big saber tooth fan right neither am i like he's not he's not a staple individual <laughs> no no for me he's an iron fist villain like he's no, just <laughs> he's just not yeah right um so i'm like no but you're you're yeah you're yeah, you're you're a revenge yeah, machine. That's he's not even doing. a bad guy. I love to hate. I just don't care for him. Yeah, he's yeah, just yeah. not my cup of tea. It's kind of gross. I don't really care for Sabretooth. Yeah. Um, so it's up to you if you're gonna read it or not. I don't know. Yeah. But you know, this is this is Ben Percy's. This is what he wants to do. This is a swan song. This is a swan song, and I I I, I love that he's working like cooperatively with the per like with Victor Lavelle, who was working on Saber. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I think that's cool that they're they've come together on this book um you know and like I, th I think that just shows really cool creative respect between the two of them yeah so, anyway well only six more issues to go jesus that's a lot you said me it's getting eight issues yeah eight eight issues of this war of this war yeah that's a lot of that's what i'm saying it's a lot of war it's anyway, a lot of war yeah it's a lot of war for us to end on on things where wolverine's like oh no <laughs> yeah every uh, every page every issue ends with wolverine going oh this one i'm like oh geez all right <laughs> All right, Captain Seven. I saw it. What's in the box? Oh no, she she did that. Like Laura had wrapped a gift for him. That was for Wolverine from Laura. Oh, I there's thought... like literally no way they wrapped that back up unless they did. I, I mean, think... that would be a lot of effort. Oh, okay. I thought Laura's. That would be a lot of effort. Yeah. To do that. Right. Um, but yeah, no, like they're gonna he, they're gonna beat him down. They're gonna beat Wolverine down until he's at his lowest, so that when he like comes swinging back in, it I mean will, nothing to grow back from. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be like he'll like you'll you, you can't help but want to cheer for him. Yeah, exactly. Point. Berserker Mirage. And bingo. He better yell that. Um, the other thing I read, which I know you haven't had a chance, so I'm not gonna go super into it, was um Batman Off World, 
Uh, ah, yes. Three. I actually did read issue three. You read it before me. I did. I, I did. I love this book unabashedly. And, and I just, read it. I just it. didn't have a chance to read it. No, but... it's okay. It's uh, written by uh, Jason, Jason Aaron, Aaron with art by Doug Menke. Yep. Menke? I say Menke, like the Pokemon. I know. I Menke! Know. Uh, this this book's ridiculous. And <laughs> um, just, just you know, I there is something about it where like I'm like, okay well i have to know what's gonna happen next because every time you think like okay the book is going to be just this jason Aaron's like, Hang on, no, it's not. <laughs> oh i just switched it up no it's not yeah no, no. and then and then Batman you're like, on a spaceship i thought that was gonna be the I'm book like, yeah that's the book all right cool cool it was a short mini series right, land got it no 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 that's not it and then this issue was like ah it's also not it right batman liberating a town that's not what it is. No. <laughs> that is not what it is. That's what the pitch was at the end of the last issue. That is not what this is at all. I will not even ruin it for Sal, but like, let me tell you, like, I was like, wait, what? So then he does accomplish something in this issue. And then at the end of it, he's like, okay, but wait, <laughs> but wait. Yeah. Um, You know, there's even a moment where like Ione, or I don't know how you say her name. I don't know either. I don't know if you say Ion or Ione. I've never said it. I say Ione. <laughs> um, is kind of like she 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 tries to. She's like, oh, Batman, eh? Mm. They have a minute, okay. like a moment, and Good then for Batman. And he, I'm not made no, of stone. No, he Batman's right up, uh. and she's like, okay. And then later on, on calm, she starts calling Bruce, and then she's like, Batman. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, that's uh, you. You missed that the ship sailed. Yeah, Bruce. that's over, Bruce. You, you, you had the, the hot. I'm not gonna people. have sex with alien people. That's what my son does. <laughs> He's gonna call me a copycat. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> so true. Um, that said, I do not love the art of this series. I do. And it's, I'm not a huge fan of it. I at times I wish it was a little more refined. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even though I recognize that it doesn't need to be, it's just that is more. Yeah, it's just, a, it's, it's just it's an just, aesthetic choice. That is a subjective opinion yes, on agreed. my part. I'm just not feeling it so much but it's not enough to put me off on the book because I, I literally can't help but find the story to be charming mm -hmm. charming there's a moment in this where i was just like i was like rooting for something to happen and honestly we have no closure on it yet and i'm like i really hope the next issue gives me closure yeah. on this one plot point. i really i really need closure on this one thing i think i might have to go back and reread it i might have actually gotten closure and i wasn't paying attention mm. or i didn't read i didn't like tell the story from the panel the right way yeah, yeah, yeah but there is something i really really need some closure on and uh I, I i'm hoping it delivers strange little story not the same kind of strange as batman reptile when i was reading no, that month to month because that different. was a trip that was something else that was its own thing for sure this is its own thing but it's a solid story um you know, Gotham is mentioned a whole lot, but you were not going to. But we're not going there. Yeah, occasionally we flash back to it. Sure. So you can like, keep it like, grounded. Yeah, you got to be like, oh yeah. I oh forgot. right, this is what Batman is. That's what he's all about. Um, and new bat suit in this one. Oh, cool. New bat suit. Hooray! He makes a new one. Nice. A space one. I'll take it. I want to see it. <laughs> I don't know why. I just love it. I just love the series. I think it, it's fun and cool. It's fun. Maybe because it's like not a main series book. It's yeah. like its own thing. It's just doing it's a something. flashback book. It reminds me of Legends of the Dark Knight, where it's sure. like, here's a flashback book about something the Batman to Batman for like a crazy month. Yeah, this just happened. Yeah. Someone else was watching Gotham. Oh, no one was. Batman. Gordon was watching Gotham. He's like, well, I guess I'll just do work. He's just flicking the light on and off. Yeah. Hello? Batman. <laughs> <laughs> what maybe one of your members of your child army will come help me <laughs> or i'll just call the police and have them do it how do i get superman yeah but uh <laughs> yeah i'm 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 hyped i love that series i'll have to read it yeah um, no absolutely yeah but uh yeah there's some uh there's some books coming out this week that we think you should check there out there are some uh, books coming out this week i'm gonna read batman 142 this is the beginning of the joker year one which uh no but uh i'll read it we'll see how it goes it's chip zadarsky and uh, andrea sorrentino doing the art along um, yes along with uh Eusebio Camincoli. excellent uh so we'll see i i uh i'll see uh, uh Someone in chat really quickly asked if I've been loving Flash so far. Yes. Yes. I, I really like Cy Spurrier's Flash. I love the look of that book. I love the story of that book. Mm -hmm. But I get that Flash fans may not be down for it. I completely no. understand. I yeah. completely get it. <laughs> uh, Ultimate Black Panther number one is coming out, which you probably can't get. I know I didn't freaking pre-order it, so I won't be reading this book on a physical. Uh, Brian Hill, Stefano Caselli. Uh, I really I need to know. I need to see where, what the what the hubbub is about. Yeah. Birth of Prey number six is uh, one of the best books you're not reading. Kelly Thompson, Leonardo Romero. This is a great book. It's so fun. It's quintessentially DC. It celebrates these uh, these these awesome female characters. You get a Wildstorm character and Big Barda. You get Zealot and Big Barda. 
teaming up with Harley Quinn Those and Black two. Canary. Those two are just fun. I'm so hyped. This is such a great book. I love it. I just, I love it. Mm. Uh, so pick that mm. up as well. Mm. Captain America number six from uh, Babylon 5 creator J. Michael Straczynski uh, with art by Lan Medina. Uh, this is a good book. I really like it. Uh, it's not uh, the usual uh, artist on it, but uh, I'm going to check it out anyway because I think it's just a, a fantastic series. Um, and uh, huge sales on this book. Uh, Thundercats number one from uh, Dynamite uh, with art by Declan Shal. I'm sorry, with, written by Declan Shalvey with art by Drew Moss. Uh, I'm going to check this out. Beginning of a new saga for the Thundercats. Um, maybe Declan Shalvey will come on the channel and we'll talk about it a little bit in the next Ooh. few days or so. But uh, I'm, I'm excited for it. And uh, I don't know, I will read this book, but only because of the title. It's called DC's How to Lose a Guy Gardener in 10 Days Valentine's Day Special. I was like, well, uh, top marks for your naming. Uh, obviously, a number of different creators working on this, including Marguerite Savage, Aaron Watke, uh, Alex Gaylor, Brennan Hay, yeah, Kenny Porter. Danny Love, Dennis Hopeless, George Mann, Kenny Porter, Amanda Connor, Jimmy Palmiotti, etc. Uh, it's just great. Uh, just a fun idea. I I'm, I'm in. <laughs> How to lose a guy gardener in 10 days. Fart. <laughs> Uh, fun stuff. So good. It's fantastic. Yep. Wow. What have I done? <laughs> I've done things. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I did a thing and I didn't mean to Just do it. the middle of the... I did. That's, what it, that's when it went down. Yeah, you did it. I did do it. X-Men number 31 will be coming out this week. It's, just, no, nothing it's the more. main X-Men book. <laughs> nothing more. I'll be purchasing that. Yes. Uh, Doctor Strange number 12. Man, yeah. Where are we going next? I don't know. But... Wait, go back to it. Oh, sure. Sorry. Good, it's not canceled after 12 issues. Wow, <laughs> no way, I was expecting it to be. So, no, you know. it's Jed McKay writing it. They're I gonna know. be like, make that man happy, <laughs> please don't if let him wants, leave. If he wants to keep writing it, let the man keep writing it. Whatever, mm -hmm. it's all it's all fantastic. No argument here. Um, there must be something else coming out that I, I want to read. Um, there may be, there uh, might be. Love I, Everlasting Sal, is coming. Sal literally always gets a head jump, like he like pulls everything, and then I'm like. Yeah, uh, oh, you I need should... to read more Gone and see if you if you like that book. Or not. Okay, I do. I think do I have it? You have the first issue, I believe. Ooh, okay. <gasps> Dark, oh, that's right. Dark Spaces, um, Dungeon from IDW is coming out this week, written by Scott Snyder or by Hayden Sherman. Love this story, so creepy. Cannot wait for more. Yes, I've also I've read that book already. Out. Yeah, yeah, I need to oh, send it to you. you. But uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, Dark Spaces Dungeon Number Three mm -hmm. is great, but the series itself is fantastic. If you want to, if you want to know more about that book and perhaps some rumors that have been uh, circulating the internet lately, Scott Snyder is on the channel. He's coming out tomorrow. Fantastic. So fantastic. Stay tuned for that episode and more. We got plenty of different interviews coming out, including Scott's return, triumphant return to the channel. Was supposed to do thirty minutes. Stayed for another half an hour just to talk about comics. Hey, that's great. Uh, I want to give a, a shout out, um, of course, uh, for people who love Rom V, uh, another person you've had another on this channel. Uh, he's got a new uh, series coming out from Image. It's called The One Hand. So if you're a big Rom V fan, I want to point you in that direction so that you can go grab that, but also make sure to grab IDW's uh, D Dark Spaces Dungeon because I seriously do love that book. You do. It's oh, great. It's just, it's just so good. That's not even because he was on the channel. I just no, it's legitimately a good book. really like that book uh, quite a bit um wow i figured there'd be like a, like at least a few other x titles but it no. doesn't look like it. i guess we're just winding down they are winding down i just wanted to see what this dark souls book was i'm like is it actually related to dark souls Probably. yes it is i like the titan has the license for that good for them yeah they're just making dark souls books sure mm -hmm. why not yeah maybe i'll check out gone as well um since it's a light week why not for you yeah you know what i've heard quite a bit about um no. which i had known about but i really was like Eh, I was already reading, uh, like you know, the Deviant from Tynan. Yes. Um, but um, I, I, Pat and Oswald went out on uh, social media and, and told everybody about how great uh, Tynan's Dracula oh. series is. Um, you know, he apparently has a fan of like just the different iterations of Dracula. Mm. This one is changing apparently um, a little bit of what you might know about Dracula, but not too too much. Like it's just like, all the characters are there. The art is gorgeous. Apparently, that's really why I want to check it out. Not that tie-in writing isn't fantastic, so maybe I will go check that too. Um, it looks like they also did a tie-in <clears throat> series to Suicide Squad. The, ah, yes, the game. Yeah. So yeah, well, if you're a fan, that, that be, could be for you as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess that's it for yeah. me for right now. Who knows? I mean, obviously, when to read Ultimate Black Panther, it's just that Sal already mentioned it. It's so, true. Yeah, what I'm am sorry. I going to do? Say it again? Well, you could. Well, you did. So. <laughs> 
Uh, and yeah, that's it. So we want to thank our super chatters for sponsoring today's show. If you want more, there's so much more here on this channel. For example, uh, we had Greg Wiseman, creator of Gargoyles and the upcoming writer on the spectacular Spider-Men series, Pete and Miles teaming up on a book and no one's miserable or unhappy. So that might be fun to read. Uh, you should check that out as well. But the interview itself came out on Saturday and it was a really fun conversation. And uh, if you are interested in that insight, you should definitely check out that episode. A lot of interviews this month. And I do, uh, I know that some folk are like, oh, I don't like Brussels sprouts. Well, if you cover them in lemon and you roast them in the oven, they're actually quite delicious. So maybe, and they're good for you. So why not try them? Uh, but the, we, we have a number of different conversations coming out uh, in the next uh, month, uh, including uh, conversations with people like Christopher Priest for the first time ever. Declan Shalvey is coming on the channel. Todd McFarlane is returning, of course. Scott Snyder is here. Uh, so a lot of big, a lot of big names, a lot of surprises. And uh, so definitely check those out. Tiffany, I had a great chance to uh, talk to the creative team behind The Hunger in the Dusk from IDW. Okay. Wonderful book. Beautiful looking series. Yeah. Uh, if you're a big fan of fantasy, wow. Uh, Baldur's Gate. You will like this book, especially if you like some sexy times. Oh, I should also mention, uh, speaking okay. of sexy, uh, uh, old friend of the channel, uh, Kat Kalima from uh, Kamakuno. Uh, sent me over a uh, a copy of her series. It was a brand new book from Kickstarter that she put together, uh, which I have. I definitely have it. And I, and, and God help me. I don't know where it is. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry, cat. Next time I'll talk about it. <laughs> I'll hang on to it. It'll be, it'll be the next one, but there's there a, there you go. there's a, there's a, there's a fun book that uh, we'll talk about next time. All right. But, uh, but hang on there. Thank you so much for your like in the video, subscribe to our channel. Yeah. And of course, check out Tiffany on stream, uh, youtube.com at comic pop plays or twitch.tv slash comic pop. I don't uh, know what's going to happen this week. It's a crazy week. A, uh, we need you to shoot week. the show. Uh, back issue is going to have a special, uh, guest. In and it's not to, just me. And it's not just Tiffany. I'm no. not a guest. Any. I'm not. Yeah, I'm just the other person. You you are the other one of the hosts yeah, of the channel. <laughs> but uh, well, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot for watching. And uh, and please, uh, there's actually a, a playlist we just created called What You Missed This Week. And uh, so if you have uh, a minute, go check out either uh, main page on youtube.com slash comp up or here. And you'll see a link. Uh, there'll be just all the videos you missed over the last week. And uh, we also throw in some of those streams when we're all on them. So like uh, we're, we're playing Lethal Company, uh, both uh, or all three of us, Tiffany, myself and Ben. Yeah. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it cool, uh, it's a cool game and a lot of fun to play. We really enjoy it. We do. We do. I really wish we had been recording that time. We all just like the three of you us. You just died. Die. We just jumped. We all three left. of us jumped into a, a mud puddle i just looked at them and then turned my radio off i'm like well and then left no one to talk to on this thing <laughs> take off uh but yeah we just did a stream last night so if you want to see the most recent stream you can check that out over on youtube.com at comic pop plays uh that came out and uh, it's also on the list so fantastic thanks for watching everybody we'll see you guys next week with another episode i'm sal and i'm tiffany Long, everybody bye-bye